scale. Humans are really bad at comprehending it, and potentially even worse at writing it. Sci-fi as a genre lets a writer go beyond our limits here on Earth and go with whatever wacky ideas come into their head, which leads to a lot of ridiculous logistical irregularities and nonsense. Star Wars might be the absolute best example, because the Clone Wars have horrific scale problems. The amount of clone troopers produced in total is intentionally vague, but we can guess somewhere in the range of 3 to 10 million. The CIS, on the other hand, had upwards of a quintillion battle droids. Ignoring how ridiculous it is that a force like that could even exist, this means that for the clones to have won the war, which they did. Assuming the most optimal scenario, each individual clone had to be as or more effective than 100 billion battle droids. Each. As seen in all media portraying them, they are not that good. Clones are consistently seen getting shit whipped every single time they're on screen, but somehow are able to be as effective as a tenth of a trillion droids off screen. It's hard to overstate how ridiculous these numbers are. If we liken these numbers to real life and assume one person can take out one single battle droid, that means that a single clone? One single clone is ten times as effective as the entire human population of Earth. Not just all the soldiers on Earth, all of the humans on Earth. Star Wars' problem with scale doesn't end there, as Coruscant is a giant nightmare hell that makes no logistical sense. You see this cutscene in Jedi Survivor? This is one of the tunnels out of Coruscant from the lower levels. Do you see how long this is? This cutscene is several minutes long and there are no winding paths, it's a straight line. Unless I'm meant to believe that they made all these mechanical layers for fun, I imagine these are all entrances to new levels of Coruscant, which have to be hundreds of them. Coruscant is said to have trillions of citizens, and uh, frankly, I believe it. Unless, of course, there are actually only two levels on Coruscant, the upper level and then the undercity with the giant tunnels connecting the two. If that's the case, well, why in the goddamn build tunnels that take sci-fi space fighters several minutes to traverse? Did they consider, I don't know, making the second level a little closer to the surface? It's kind of a massive waste of time and money to build it that deep for no reason. I also don't buy that the bottom layer could have been the like original planet that they built on top of, because then you couldn't have permanent infrastructure on the top like the Senate building in case more levels were to be built. I know Coruscant is ancient because Star Wars has like a billion years of lore that's never seen, but can you imagine trying to lobby for this? Mm, yes, I believe that we should make the Undercity several hundred miles below the surface, and then we can just stick all the poor people down there so I don't have to think about them, nor worry about their vitamin D deficiencies. And get this, there's absolutely no safeguard, so you can just fall into the giant nightmare pit at any time, and then take half an hour to fall all the way down. Star Wars definitely isn't the only universe out there with hilariously ridiculous scale. Halo has this rifle brought up in a couple books called the Stanchion. It fires rounds a quarter of an inch long, semi-automatically, which go 15,000 meters a second, or 9.3 miles a second. That is 43 times the speed of sound. The fastest bullet ever produced in real life is less than a tenth of that speed. Rather entertainingly, its effective range is listed as half of the distance it goes in in a single second. That seems like a bit of a design flaw? I hope the absurdity of this speaks for itself. You could pretty much assassinate any target you want anywhere within your current gravity well within a blink of an eye with this thing, and presumably it was taken out of service to give the Covenant a fighting chance. Scale doesn't strictly have to be about the size of some things, contrary to what the word itself means. This video is intended to be a bit of a spiritual sequel to this one I made a few months ago, and the hypothesis of that video is as follows. If you want people to be different from each other, give them a reason to be different. In a sci-fi universe, you can have aliens which need environmental suits to live at all, Maybe some can only eat food from the planet they're originally from, others may have entirely different sets of limbs from humans, and there'd probably be tons of prosthetics available to modify anyone's bodies into any limb set that they might want, both for commercial and recreational purposes. Each of these things would be incredibly impactful on one's life, and would bring a lot of flavor if brought up when they become relevant. Star Wars isn't very good at this. Everyone speaks basic, 
Most have two legs and two arms, and any differences between them are almost entirely aesthetic. Grease and, uh, whatever his name was from Solo, are pilots with four arms, which actually does make a lot of sense. People are going to actively search out those who are naturally better suited for whatever job they're hiring for. You could argue that the tiny puppet dudes in the sequels also fit this bill, but in a universe where precision isn't hard to come by, casting super tiny dudes as mechanics makes reverse sense. What I just said might seem contradictory to what I said in the other video, and I'd like to apologize, perhaps a little late, for not making my points obvious enough in said video. I think my point came off like, you shouldn't make races different because that's racist, which is true to a degree, but what I was trying to actually say is that you need palpable distinctions between races if you want them separated. If the changes between them are almost nothing but aesthetic, they would all intermingle without issue. It makes sense that Tolkien's elves are isolated from everyone else because they live way longer than them. They are just not physically capable of integrating into other societies. There isn't anything wrong with Babu Frick and friends being legendary mechanics. People overcome genetic issues in their fields all the time. It's just that picking someone who looks like Doc Ock is probably a tad more likely. You don't have to do this at all, and that's a point I tried to mention as well. I much prefer races being entirely cosmetic and then not having any conflicts come up from racial tensions, but cultural tensions instead. I find this to be infinitely more realistic, which is something that I try to preserve a lot in my writing. I want everything I make to be grounded and believable. Unfortunately, as this video aims to highlight, this is not the priority of a lot of writers. Stories that favor the rule of cool do so for a reason. Most people aren't autistic enough to care about logistical inconsistencies and won't blink twice at the 43 times speed of sound murder cannon. That's where this video's superficial comes from in its title. These issues can be anything but the strict definition of superficial, where you have to really, like, dig in to notice them, but I still think they count because these problems don't really matter. If you've gotten invested enough to care about these logistical issues, you are probably already a big fan of the work, and are being a pedant. This is another point I'd like to hammer home because I don't think I did a good enough job of it last time. These are not rules everything must follow. Like I said, the rule of cool exists for a reason, and if you don't want to put that much thought into everything, you don't have to. This advice is only for writing a grounded story, not universal advice that every story must follow ever. The same was intended to be true of the first video, and I apologize for not making that clear. I would also like to bring attention to the distinction between realistic and grounded. Realistically, mechs are, as far as we currently know, uh, probably physically impossible. Writing them in a realistic way means uh, not including them, but writing them in a grounded way means keeping them away from the realm of anime bullshit and still mostly respecting the laws of physics and reality. It means putting actual thought into their loadouts and how they would be made, how that would impact militaries across the world, and how they might come into inception. It means that when someone impromptu rockets into space to escape combat, instead of them just being like fine afterwards, they pass out from experiencing an unbelievable amount of g-forces. Now, realistically, the mech wouldn't be built at all, but now that's just not fun, is it? Writing a grounded story, and especially a grounded sci-fi story, is insanely hard. If it's set deep out in space, you probably can't take much from real-world cultures if you want it to be somewhat grounded. The equivalent would be people today still walking, talking, and conducting themselves as Romans. You'd have to use completely made-up cultures which you have nothing but your old brain pan to make yourself from scratch, and that goes for aliens and humans. People on different stations are going to talk very differently, think differently, and have different opinions from not just those on Earth, but also from every other station. Even one culture per main location or country is hard enough, but trying to write something that is ethnically diverse akin to the Balkans is actually nightmarish. To do that, you go take a look at one of the ethnic maps of Yugoslavia that looks like Tito threw up on it, and then reconsider. <laughs> the difficulty of portraying this correctly isn't the only reason it's avoided, though. Apex has a cast almost entirely aligned with real-world cultures because it feels nice to be represented in a video game. Sure, it's pretty damn unlikely that Maori Hakka chants are still going to exist this far into the future and away from Earth, but people playing this game are from there. They want to be represented, and there's nothing wrong with that. Apex isn't trying to be a realistic, grounded story, and that's fine. Star Sector is an excellent example of a very grounded sci-fi story. None of the cultures depicted, maybe with the exception of the Luddites, really have ties to real-life ones and are wholly based around the events of the universe and how that would have shaped the people here. Man, Star Sector just keeps having things for me to compliment. It's crazy. 
FTL is another good example, with races having distinct traits that change how they speak and interact with others. Slugs are probably the best example. They're pieces of shit because they're telepathic with latent psionic powers who all speak with a car salesman accent, not because they're arbitrarily evil. Having said psionic abilities is going to fundamentally change how you're going to interact with others, and that is represented well. Laniuses don't really get along with anyone else because they absorb the air that they need to breathe, and also eat what everyone else makes things out of. It makes perfect sense that they keep to themselves because they pretty much just can't integrate into other societies. Because they put in such a large amount of effort in making the races feel so distinctly different, it's a lot more acceptable that they don't intermingle much. It also plays into the narrative a little bit that your ship can be made up of anyone. You're a federation vessel that can and will work with anyone against the human supremacists of the rebellion. Ultimately, does anything that I talked about here matter? No, not, no, not really. George Lucas was focused on making the most influential media of all time, not getting bogged down by pointless logistics which don't impact the viewing experience. But if I have to write something which makes no logistical sense, a coincidence, or god forbid a prophecy, I'm pretty sure that means that I as the writer have failed. I am of the belief that you should always be able to explain why everything is happening in your world in a way that doesn't just hand wave the details away and say, uh, yeah, it just happens because I said so and I needed it for the plot to advance. Writing in a grounded way helps make everything that you write infinitely more believable and immersive, which is an aspect that I treasure extremely valuably. I have said this before, and I'll say it again. If you can use magic to harness the power of the ethereal plane, you can probably work out gunpowder. Gunpowder predates the invention of toilets, okay? Firearms are not that complicated. If there are people in your world utilizing heavy machinery, chances are they're going to stumble across black powder soon enough. Mages might even work it out too, especially if their magic is based in alchemy. The fact that D&D still doesn't have an official gunslinger class is ridiculous. Thanks to all my patrons. You're all quite wonderful people. Love you all, and good night. Overkill, please give me access to Payday 3.